Welcome to another weekly video of Tiki's Geckos. This week, we're talking about gargoyle gecko morphs. Before we begin, we have to understand what a morph is. A morph is a combination of the different phenotypes we see in these geckos. A phenotype is basically the visual characteristics that we see, such as the pattern, the color, and the structural traits like the horns on the gargoyle geckos. So let's begin with the structural trait. The structure of a gargoyle gecko is basically the knobs that it has on top of its head and that's actually how they got their name, gargoyle gecko. These guys resemble the gargoyle statues that we all know because of the horns and the knobs that they get on top of their head. 99% of the time, people are more drawn to the bigger knobs. The knobs that stick out the most on top of their head, that's what's going to be the most attractive for people and the most desirable. Now I should say that baby gargoyle geckos are born with a smooth head, but as they get older, the knobs on top of their head and the bones will start to grow and you could see them stick out on their head. Another structural trait would be the snout length. Some gargoyle geckos will have a long snout and some will have a shorter snout. A short snout will tend to look like, almost like the gecko has bigger eyes and bulgier eyes and it can be actually pretty cute. And then the longer snout can almost look more predatory like. There is no giant morph for the gargoyle geckos, but gargoyle geckos do tend to be a little bit bigger than crested geckos, about 10 grams or so bigger in average. And there has been records of gargoyle geckos that get massive. I'm talking about leechy sizes. Yeah, leechy sizes. Um, there's a, a gargoyle gecko on record that was kept by Alan Rapashi. Her name was Large Marge, and she weighed 145 grams or so. That's just about three or four times this girl's size. Now, one of my favorite qualities about gargoyle geckos is the variety of colors in the iris. Yes, these guys have a huge variety of colors in their iris. They could have black eyes, which we call the phantom gargoyle geckos, blue eyes, light gray, dark gray, and pretty much any shade in between. When we refer to a phantom gargoyle gecko, we are just referring to the color of their eyes. Some phantoms will have both black eyes, some will only have one black eye, or some will only have one dark gray eye, or both dark gray eyes. Now, something I never hear any breeders talk about, or anybody online for that matter, is the eye rim color. I've always been fascinated by that. I love the gargoyle geckos that have a yellow eye rim and there's also red, orange, and pretty much everything in between, but I think, it, I think it gives them a really neat look to them, especially when you start mixing the iris color and the outer rim color, and then obviously the pattern and the base color. Similar to crested geckos, gargoyle geckos can also come in a variety of different base colors. This girl in particular has a reddish tint to her base, but they can come in yellow base color, uh, red, orange, the classic, which would be like a wild type animal, you know, with more of a brownish look. Um, and then the white base color, which kind of goes hand in hand with the black and whites. There is also a pastel color that is very, very hard to find. And a pastel gargoyle gecko basically looks like it's unfired or kind of faded, almost like a ghost African fat tail gecko. But when it does fire up, it's not going to have bold striping like... It's basically gonna stay unfired the whole time. That's what we call pastel, and it has uh, almost like a, well, obviously a pastel color-ish to it. Now, when we're talking about gargoyle geckos, there's two major pattern morphs that we break them down to. The reticulated and then the striped. The reticulated morph is gonna be some type of net-like or web-like pattern across the body, almost like a marbling, and it's gonna look very cryptic, you know, it's gonna, be perfect for camouflage and in the wild most of the geckos that we have found have been reticulated or banded. A banded is a variation of the reticulated morph where there are long streaks of bands that go across the body on top of the reticulation. The alterna morph is going to be a very very light and almost uniform base with very thin uh, bands that go across the back. 
Now among some of the rarest reticulated geckos are the patternless and I know that's like an oxymoron how could it be patternless and be reticulated at the same time but hear me out. Patternless gargoyle geckos are not truly patternless like they are with crested geckos most of the time. A patternless gargoyle gecko is going to have some sort of banding or reticulation and it's just going to be very 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 faded away. Now the more faded away it is the closer to patternless that it looks the rarer it's going to be and most of the time these guys are look they look you know basically all white and a lot of people call them ghost gargoyle geckos these guys are among some of the rarest and they're very hard to find similar to the patternless would be what alan rapashi and philippe de Vosjoli would call a hypo a hypo animal by definition is an animal that lacks melanin and melanin is just the dark pigment in their skin so a hypo would be a gargoyle gecko that has very little to no dark pigment now some of the harder to distinguish and some of the rarer forms of the bandit or the reticulated morph are going to be the mosaics the mosaics are basically geckos that have really large and broad banding across their body and a lot of them also have traces of stripes now the second base pattern morph and my personal favorite is the striped the stripe creates dark lines that run from the head all the way to the tail base or even across the tail sometimes the stripes can go across the sides and basically all over the body now just like the reticulated pattern morph the stripe pattern morph can also be broken down into several different subcategories. First, we're going to talk about the super stripe. The super stripe is basically going to have a thick mid dorsal stripe that runs down from the top of the head all the way down to the tail base and thick stripes that run down the mid lateral area. Super stripes will also have a refined line running down the tail unless it's regenerated. The aberrant stripe is a striped animal that has lines that are broken up or zigzagged in the laterals and the upper laterals. It is thought that these animals are heterozygous for reticulated and if you breed two aberrant stripes together you will end up with some reticulated offspring. The black and white stripes are some of the most beautiful gargoyle geckos out there and they have a high contrast between the dark lines running down their body and the white base. Okay, so when you add red or orange to the reticulated type morphs, you're going to get blotched geckos. The blotches are spread out randomly across the body of the reticulation and it just looks absolutely stunning. Especially when you get what's called a super blotched and where it's mostly all covered in red. On the flip side, if you add red or orange to a striped gecko, the color is going to take the form of the stripes and it's going to go across the body making really attractive red or orange stripes, sometimes even both. Among some of the rarest red striped geckos are the six striped geckos. These are geckos that have two red inner dorsal lines, two outer dorsal lines, and then two lateral lines of red. That's right, red or orange. So that's personally my favorite morph and what I'm really, really trying to develop and what I really really like is when the red goes from the cheek and it goes all the way across to the dorsal and to the laterals. Opposite from the hypo geckos or the patternless ghost gargoyle geckos there are some that are called the melanistic or black gargoyle geckos. Now these guys are covered about 60 to 80 percent with black pigment across their body and they could come in both reticulated or in striped form next i'm gonna play some video clips of some different gargoyle geckos and i want you guys to guess the morph before i reveal the answer Now there are some gargoyle geckos out there that don't fall into any particular morph pattern that we described today 
They are oddball gargoyle geckos, but until they're proven genetically, I didn't really want to include them in the video. That's gonna wrap this week's video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it as always You know the deal if you like the video subscribe give us a thumbs up and remember to follow us on Instagram Facebook Snapchat and Twitter for more updates and to see some of our gargoyle geckos Another structural trait would be the snout length. A lot of gargoyle geckos will have a short snout and some will have a longer snout. Now, the shorter snout will... English, motherfucker, do you speak it? What? <coughs> this is like the best gargoyle gecko ever. She always just sits here. Traces of lot of stripes. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, you know, in the movies and, and uh, ancient Rome. <laughs> The another uh, get this book. Wakanda, Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Gargoyle gecko with like a yellow rim. Oh, yellow. A patternless crest. Uh, now when we call it. Blah, 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 and it's gonna go across the body down like this like this oh my god I'm rushing it man and it makes really stripe pattern morph can also be down I'm gonna put you on my shirt girl just don't put But if I had to choose between a reticulated and a stripe, I go striped all the way, all the time. Sorry, but it's the truth. Deal with it. Now, I will say that...